Right. It would not be biology if we do not also cover plants as well in the chapter of homeostasis. In the previous videos that we've seen up till now for this particular chapter, we've covered homeostasis in humans where we talked about how humans control the amount of water in the blood and also our blood glucose concentration to ensure that it does not go too high or too low. And of course, the otter is a mammal and the otter also has to do the same thing. They have to control their blood glucose concentration and also the amount of water in the blood. But the question is, do plants have to do homeostasis? Do they have to make sure that, you know, internal environments do not go too high or too low? And the answer is, surprisingly, yes, plants also have to do homeostasis as well. But they do not need to control their blood glucose concentration. Uh, however, they have to control the amount of water in their cells, not blood, by the way, because plants do not have blood, right? So in plant homeostasis, we do have to talk a little bit about the opening and closing of the stomata. And what I'm drawing out here is the leaf cross section. You can see the upper epidermis, the palisade mesophyll, spongy mesophyll. I'm also drawing out the vascular bundle in the leaf made out of the xylem and phloem and you can see at the lower part the lower epidermis and the guard cells and the stoma is the gap that occurs between the two guard cells like that the function of the guard cells just to go into it quite quickly it controls the opening and closing of the stomata the question here is why does the stoma have to be either open or closed Right? Because the reason why the stoma is open sometimes, it's to allow the leaf to carry out gas exchange. Because, you know, during photosynthesis, the leaf needs to obtain carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. So the gas, the CO2 diffuses into the leaf through the stomata. And the CO2 can only diffuse into the leaf if there's a gap. And the stoma provides that opening or that hole so that CO2 can enter or if the plant needs if the plant needs oxygen for aerobic respiration, it allows that to happen as well. But in doing so, by keeping the stoma open, it might allow a process known as transpiration, where the plant loses water through the form, in the form of water vapor. Now, in some cases, the plant has to close the stoma, as you can see there in the diagram, and when the stoma is closed, gas exchange and transpiration will stop as well. So, the homeostasis of the plant, at least for this particular chapter, is going to be focusing on the fact that the stoma either has to be open depending on certain circumstances or the stoma has to be closed during certain circumstances. So when does the stoma have to go from open to close? The stoma usually closes when there's a low light intensity or not enough light in the environment or also when there is very low humidity and high temperature. The reason why is because at low humidity and high temperatures, the plant will lose too much water through transpiration. And to prevent that process from happening, to prevent the plant from losing too much water, the guard cells will have to force the stoma to close. And by doing so, they stop the transpiration process. Okay, And of course, if the plant has enough water, they can open the stoma again. And they usually open the stoma when there's high light intensity because to allow CO2 to, to diffuse into the leaf for, for photosynthesis. Because when there's a lot of light, the plant wants to try to do as much photosynthesis as possible. But to do so, the stoma has to open to allow CO2 gases to just enter the leaf through diffusion. So this is the homeostatic mechanism for the plant. They have to either close the stoma depending on certain situations, for example, low humidity and high temperature, or they have to open the stoma during high light intensity. So the guard cells are just these structures that will actually control whether the stoma opens or closes. So we are going to talk a little bit about how the guard cells do that. Now, what I'm going to draw here, I just want you to understand this very important thing. As you can see, this is a cross-section of the lower epidermis and the guard cells together with the stoma. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to also draw out a three-dimensional view of how it's supposed to look like if you were to see it under the microscope. As you can see that the pink color ones are the lower epidermis, the green color ones are the two guard cells, and the highlighted part where I've highlighted in yellow that is actually the stoma or the gap and as you can see there is the stoma open or closed there that one is open 
But for the right side, as you can see, lower epidermis, pink color, um, the green color one is the guard cells, and here the guard cells have changed their shape. And here, can you see the stoma, the gap? No, you can't. All right. So essentially, what I want you to appreciate here is as follows. For the guard cells to either open or close the stoma, the shape of the guard cells will have to change. And we will talk about how the guard cells change their shapes to either open or close the stoma. Now, I want you to also notice the guard cells when the stoma is open and the guard cells when the stoma is closed. Notice something interesting here. If you were to just appreciate the size between the two of them, you notice that the guard cells on the left are larger than the guard cells on the right side. The reason is because the guard cells on the left here, that, that pair of guard cells, are turgid, which means to say they are full of water and have represented the water in blue dots. You see, when water goes into the plant cells, the plant cells will try to expand, but they cannot expand too much because of the cell wall. The cell wall restricts it and it makes the guard cells turgid. So conversely, to make the guard cells smaller and close the stoma, what needs to happen? There has to be a lack of water, which means to say the guard cells will be flaccid. So what I want you to understand first here is as follow. When water enters the guard cells by osmosis, the guard cells become turgid and the stoma will open. That's the first thing I want you to understand. But when the water leaves the guard cells by osmosis, the guard cells become flaccid and of course the guard cells shrink and the stomata or the stoma close. Now some students may ask, what's the difference between stoma and stomata? Stoma is one or singular, stomata are plural or many. That's basically it. So that's the first thing I want you to understand about the shape of the guard cells. If you can remember at least these parts for the exam, at least about 40% of this chapter is done for plant homeostasis. So water enters the guard cells by osmosis to cause the guard cells to become turgid. The cells expand and become larger and the stomata opens. But when water leaves the guard cells by osmosis, the cell shrinks, the guard cells become flaccid and the stomata close.